Good afternoon, Israel. Good afternoon, believers. It's your brother, J.D. Nijah. Word of Truth with J.D. Nijah. Um, afternoon in my bedroom <laughs> with uh, Word of Truth. Um, wow, I think I'm, I think I'm up to 49 subscribers. I almost hit 50. If anybody's listening to this video, and wants to um, make JD, make Jeff Delocha happy, Bible teacher. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Fifty, that would be great. A great milestone for this channel. <laughs> Fifty subscribers. <laughs> that I'd be rocking it. Um. So um, tomorrow morning I'm waking up early. Uh, to go torture myself with some electrical work with my buddy, make some money. Um, man, my back, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to work. It's, the Lord is almost like saying, dude, you need to stop. You've done enough. And it's like, well, shoot, make my back stop hurting. And, um, I don't know. I'm in a bad situation. He, I don't know if he, how much more he wants me to do with the ministry or, if I'm missing something that he's telling me, I don't know. It's, but um, <laughs> I feel like Paul sometimes with the um, the thorn in his side, the the sickness that he had, whatever ailment or disease it was, when he asked the Lord, "Can you take this away from me?" And uh, the Lord said, "No, it's a lot of people. I'm sorry. Uh, you're." My grace is sufficient for you. So this this video is going to be, um, I just parked my truck outside, so I don't have my Bible, but I'm going to, um, mm, uh, my buddy Jay Hall asked me to um, do a video about um, what is it that Israel believes and what is it that, what is, what, what makes Israel different? I guess is what is what the question would be. What makes Israel different than the church? What makes Israel different than um, the heathen, the Gentiles, the um, the normal everyday believer? Even the difference between the two. And um, I, I thought about it a little bit. Um, the spirits probably gonna have to work with me a little bit more, but. Um, if we kind of go through some of the main themes, maybe uh, the Spirit will um, infuse us with some other thoughts on it. So I'm going to just hold on. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through a few things that I think um, are obvious to me um, as time's gone on. Um, at least some of them, some of them are all, I can only say from personal experience. And then of course the Bible, a lot of it is going to, the personal experience is going to mesh with, um, you know, the prophets, the priests and the Kings, because that's who the Israelites are. They're the, <clears throat> they're the chosen, <laughs> the chosen it sounds funny to me because, um, people think uh, the first thing, <laughs> probably the first one, the funny, the funniest one is when you think of, um, Israelite as being the chosen, <laughs> the chosen people. Um, um, everyone thinks that that means, oh, you're the lucky ones. You get the, you get the brass ring and you get to you get to dance and you get to <laughs> you get to do all this fun stuff because you're the chosen, uh uh, uh uh. <laughs> you know what we're chosen, we're chosen to be an example, and I think that for me, that's the one of the biggest things that I've learned about um my walk. Um, since the Lord told me that I was one of His, one of um, one of. Judah of Benjamin. He said, yeah, I'm, 
you're one of mine. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. And it is. It's creepy. It's really creepy. It's It's hard to deal with. Because being one of the chosen means you have um, you have a responsibility laid on you because the Lord knows you and you know the Lord and he's and if you're anything like me, see what happens I think to an Israelite is the Lord will um, will stay close to them um, through an extended period of time and even though people near you um, don't understand, between you and the Lord, it's like, you know, and then all of a sudden someone goes, oh, you're religious? I didn't know you were religious. It's like, um, no, I'm not really religious. <laughs> well, you, I know you used to go to church, so you're pretty religious, right? No, spiritual, sp spiritual. So there's a difference between religiosity. That's the other thing is being one of the chosen, you're, you don't, you don't understand things as a from a carnal standpoint, you're not looking at things like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a church going, Bible believing Christian man. And I, um, follow the ways of my church and my pastor's awesome. And we have a great worship team. You should come worship the Lord with us. It's really a great congregation. You know, it's, um, I have done that. And there are people that are um, doing their best with what they have to to find the Lord. The whole thing is, as a churchgoer, you're not designed actually to lead. You're you're designed to follow. And the sad part about that is we've separated Israel from the church because. Israel and the church doesn't necessarily always get along because from my standpoint, um, there was, oh, how can I say it? There was a lack of authority um, put on to me, even though um, I knew as much as a lot of the pastors that were in my churches and I knew them. I knew, I knew the Bible a little bit different, but it was the same basic theme about um, our savior and the heavenly father and the spirit. They, the Christian church isn't really that far off. The Bible believing um, Baptists and the Bible believing um, Calvary and the Bible believing um, Methodists aren't, you know, too far off, but the, the Baptists and the, a lot of the Protestant churches are, are pretty accurate. They just don't have the full understanding. So some of the things that they don't understand and that what I've learned even before GMS taught me was that I'd been here before. Um, the, the regeneration is definitely, um, <clears throat> something that an Israelite will feel. Um, and I've asked a lot of people, do you, do you feel like you've been here before? And, uh, many people say, uh, no, this is not the only time I've been here. And I don't know if they're just being argumentative or they really feel that way. But um, very few people, um, one of my exes from the time when a lot of this revelation was coming to me, um, she also felt that way. So it was interesting because um, between her and I, we figured out that we had probably ran into each other at least three other times, three other um, incarnations. And it's funny how the Lord brings the spirits. A lot of the people you run into will be the same spirits that you've... Um, if you're an Israelite that you've um, walked with, um, broke bread with, um, maybe di even died with, you know, and that's those are some heavy. Those are some heavy traumas that um, are in your spirit, and so another thing that I would say about the um, the Israelite is that there's been a um, 
there's a there's a deeper hurt there's a hurtful heart there's a there's a heavenly hurt heart that um that's closer to the spiritual realm in a way that creates a um uh a certain amount of trust in the world you 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 think you think things are going to change and you're given this this rosy outlook and and you've been blessed even though you keep getting tortured by other other humans you know these heathens or gentiles or um enemies of the lord they they've been hard on you through the generate regenerations but somehow your spirit continues to be alive and and joyful and and noticeable to uh, to other other beings and it's a it's it's a weird thing because um you'll be ostracized you'll be gang stalked you'll be your fingers will be pointed at you sometimes some people will really enjoy you and other times they will really um hate you and for no reason there's no reason for them to particularly enjoy you or or dislike you but it happens um anyhow um some of the other things about being israel um being israel there'll be certain things revealed to you in the bible that you there's no way you could have known and you'll you'll probably in these days especially now that we're waking up, um, you'll have an interest towards the Bible, and you won't. It won't be necessarily towards church, but you will want to investigate the Bible, and you'll have a tendency to go to the Old Testament because that's where the family stories are. So, if you're Israel, you tend to um, you tend to look into these these relationships between. Rachel and Jacob and and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Esau. What are these relationships? What who who? What are these kings doing? King David, and Bathsheba, King David and Jonathan, um, Saul and Jonathan, Saul and King David. And you have a clearer understanding. It's not a it's not a simple story. It's that you can't. An Israelite isn't going to go, the house of Saul sucks, they're a bunch of demons. Um, An Israelite will understand a deeper meaning to the house of Saul. The house of Saul is a trap for a bunch of um, non-Israelite carnal thought processes. Because at the end of the day, um, if you look at King David and Saul, King David never ever, ever hurt Saul, never did anything to um, hurt his family, never did anything against him because he knew God put Saul first. There's a reason Benjamin was chosen first. I'm not sure what it is. No one wants to look into it because everyone wants to um, go with this simplistic idea of it's the house of David. It's the house of David. The house of David is the house of Saul. It's the same friggin' house. It's the southern kingdom. And these people that say that there's a difference, the house of Saul against the house of David, they don't understand is Israel. We don't, we don't hate each other. We love our family. We, we know what each other has been through. We don't, <laughs> we know the hell we've been put through. So an Israelite will understand his own torture from his own sin. We're an example of how many ways can you screw it up. Israel is the, the, <laughs> the screw up of the planet. Israel is the example for everyone to go, damn. God sure loves those dummies. Why does he love those dummies so much? So that's that's another thing about Israel that, that people just don't understand. We don't hate each other. We're, <laughs> we feel like family. And David actually subdued the heathens 
and the Gentiles and brought them under his control. And then under Solomon, everyone was one big happy family. Gentiles, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites. Edomites didn't really go along with the plan too much and the Philistines kind of bucked up a little bit too. But overall, there was nothing they could do. Solomon had them under the spell of the Holy Spirit. They were, and that's how it's going to be in the kingdom. There's not going to be nobody bucking up against Israel. So we have to realize that we're, ah, the reason we get to rule and reign is because we've been through it. We've, where it's going to be in our hearts. It's going to be in our soul. It's going to be, it's not going to be like this anymore. We're not going to have to um, wander off for two years and then run back for three and then wander off for another year and then have the Lord chase you down and, and, and rough you up and, and bring you back. And, and then you chasing after him and he's, he's hiding from you and you're get, you're getting all wound up because you're like, where are you Lord? And that's, that's the kind of stuff that Israel goes through. It's this, it's this relationship that, um, you know, sometimes you don't call your dad for a few weeks or whatever. And you feel bad. It's like, I should call my dad or I should call my mom or I should call my son. And, Israel has that tendency to um, to stand back from family and to, to hide from family and to and to hide from God and and he tends to hide from us. He, it's a it's a big game of hide and seek. So when you think of of Israel and their relationship to God, it's a um, it's a lot of push and pull. It's not a simple. It's not a simple path it's a narrow path and it's dangerous um and the lord is always poking at you and prodding you um and that's why he asked paul when he converted him from saul he said why why are you kicking against the goads you're not going to get anywhere and that that was a lesson that was a big lesson to israel that you can your name can change you can go from Abram to Abraham. You can go from Solomon to, to Yahushua. You can go from um, Benoni to Benjamin. You can go from Saul to Paul. You know, um, he changes your name because he wants to change your spirit. And this is another, that's the other thing, this regeneration thing is we, we understand that um, we don't ever die. We know, Israel knows that. Israel knows there's no end. That's why we're so strange. That's why we're such a peculiar people. Um, death is like, death is a very heathen, um, Gentile mindset for us. We're like, die? What do you mean, die? <laughs> What's that mean? Um, we, don't, we don't understand death because we know that it's not, there's, there is no death for Israel. We're, we're going to go on forever. And that's, that's part of the message from Israel is that if you believe in our God, if you believe in Yahweh, um, Yahweh, the Adonai, the master, the creator, if you believe that he created you through Yahweh, Shai, Jesus Christ, Solomon, King Solomon, Josiah, um, the family of Israel, the first fruits, um, had a had a hand in, in creation, and so um, knowing how it started, we we know how it go. It continues; it never ends. So that's that's another aspect of Israel that um, that it's hard for a believer. Believers, church people are all about death. They love funerals. They love lesson dead bodies and all that stuff and dead bodies dead bodies are don't don't mean mean anything to israel it's like okay they're dead the spirit's gone um and we we we've seen enough dead bodies that we don't we don't hold much um <laughs> it's like a pile of ashes it's doesn't really matter to israel um what else do we have um israel 
doesn't believe in hurting people for the most part. Israel is very um, basic when it comes to the Ten Commandments. Um, most of Israel isn't going to be those type of people that are out lying, cheating, stealing. They're not going to rise up to um, worldly positions. It's it's not possible. Um, the Lord doesn't allow it. And so most of Israel will be a very blessed, um, humble, working person. Um, they don't... Um, they learn over time not to um, take things from other people, steal, um, uh, mess with other people's relationships. You don't, you don't take another man's wife. You don't take another man's girl. You don't um, talk badly about someone just because um, they're not your style. You you stay away from them and. If someone asks you, you say, not my style. But um, there's not this, um, like you see in the world, how people will go out of their way to um, make up stories and hurt people and things like that. Um, not, that's, not, that's not the Israelite way. Um, an Israelite will kill someone. An Israelite will kill someone. We, we've had enough generational trauma that um, there, there will be righteous kills that are um, considered wicked here. The, the, the Edomites and the, the heathens don't understand um, true justice and true righteousness. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, an Israelite will... Um, slip up and do a righteous kill and end up in jail. Um, that'll happen. That happens to a lot of Israelites. They will stand for God and uh, get punished for it. Um, you know, a, a, an Israelite man is expecting, a lot of time will, will expect his woman to, um, to be in, as an Israelite woman, and that's just not, especially in Babylon here, um, the women, even our Israelite women, have been, um, they're a sore thumb to us. They're, you can tell an Israelite woman because she will, um, she'll be the one that's bucking up the most. You're better off marrying a damn heathen that, um, that knows the ways of the world and wants to, <laughs> wants to make something with a man than one of these uh, damn Eves out here that, uh, think well. They're traumatized for one. They've been there. If they've been coming back over and over again, they've been abused and and they feel like the world owes them something. And now that they're in this position with the Edomites helping them out, they'll 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 do some wicked stuff. So wicked. If you see a, a woman that's really. Um, Set on herself. That's probably an Israelite woman, but um, Israelite man. Israelite men will um, tend to um, um, stink eye other Israelite men, at least in this realm. In in the spirit realm, um, we can see our brothers, but in this carnal realm, some of our brothers look. Um, They look creepy because they are creepy. Some of our Israelite brothers here are um, are out of their heads. They're bugged out. So you, it's another way you can tell an Israelite um, man is um, if there are two thirds, they'll be pretty bugged out. Though an Israelite, we don't believe in planets, by the way. We believe the Bible and the Bible. That's another one. I wanted to get that one in before I close out. Um, there's no, there's no getting out of here. Space is a, a lie. We don't believe in evolution. That's a lie. Um, we don't believe in politics because there is no king except um, King Solomon, Jesus Christ. Um, so the, the creation thing, 
Israelites are have a certain <laughs> a certain certain process on um, how everything got here and how everything's um, going to play out, and it's more natural. It's not. It's and it's biblical. It's not. It's not the science nonsense that these fools push out. So anyway, that was just a start. I wanted to do this because I'm going to go to bed here pretty soon. Sorry for the shaking. I'm like on my foot and stuff. It's like earthquake, earthquake. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed the me message. Just tried to put a, um, a sketch of what it's like to be an Israelite and some of the differences. We'll get into it some more. I'll get the Bible and we'll look into it. But anyhow, I'm out. J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth. Shalom.